A collection of matter made of receptors firing and receiving constantly. A collection of matter that has baffled scientists and philosophers alike for centuries. A collection of matter responsible for creating every human invention in history. And now, it's responsible for tricking itself. Tricking itself into believing what is not physically real is real. real. This is your brain on virtual reality. You know when you're playing a game in a dark room or watching a movie, there's points throughout where you're so immersed, so entertained that the world outside shuts itself off. All of your attention is centered on the window-sized TV and it's as if that rectangle is the world itself and you are an observer. Now, let's expand that rectangle to encapsulate you without even having to focus that world is now your world. Now you're not merely an observer, but a participant. You are present. Those two terms, present and observer, will come back to them soon, so stick with me. This is VR Glove in Atlanta, hometown love, based studio founded by a team of engineers who set out to add an extra layer of presence in virtual reality. We invited them to the studio and I touched the future. So they started me off in a training simulator demo that had me handling power tools and cutting wires. The initial reaction of, of seeing your hands and having them react to your movements was mind blowing. Next we went into a multiplayer sandbox in space. This is where the haptics kicked in and when picking up blocks I could actually feel them, feel the shape of the squares and the circles. Uh, they also had me grab some asteroids and you could grab then squeeze harder to crush, feeling everything, feeling the vibrations in space, it was insane. Lastly, we tried an early demo of a weight simulation, where they had me pick up a hammer and swing it around. Within the gloves, uh, simulated vibrations mimicked the movements, making it feel like I was holding something heavy. I can only imagine the use cases for this in, say, like a sword fighting game. All in all, the gloves were amazing, comfortable, and the sensation of holding an object without actually holding it is unspeakable. I felt like Parzival in Ready Player One. So this is Moran Cerf, a neuroscience professor at the Kellogg School of Management in Illinois. He's been studying that three pound slab of meat between your ears for the past 25 years. In one of his talks, he makes an interesting point that for the first few years as babies, the way our brain learns is by passively taking in different senses. So first sight, then noise, then touch, then smell. We then learn how to manipulate those senses by working with our hands, moving our heads to change our view, or moving our bodies to get away from a bad smell. Now, now think of the first time you used VR. With current technology, VR encapsulates sight and noise. Very soon, it will encapsulate touch as well as smell. So how can we manipulate those senses in a way that's natural? It's actually easier than you may think. Our brain communicates in a way that we can actually read in its most simple form, sound. Take a listen to this. Those are actually ticks created by the brain, the language of the brain, and we can essentially read those ticks, capture them, and make an outside machine or program react. So take the monkey experiment. This sounds like something straight out of sci-fi, but stick with me. In 2008, a chip was placed in a monkey's brain that allowed it to control a robotic arm holding a marshmallow. His arms were then gently restrained and the marshmallow was placed just far enough from his head so that if he wanted to eat, he would have to think about moving the robotic arm close enough to his mouth. So after about seven hours of this, logging data, they're packing up their gear, the experiment is done. But they found something interesting. The monkey was freed but he forgot how to use his own hands and tried to keep using the robotic arm to eat. He had to be retrained how to use his natural limbs in order to stay alive. So this makes an interesting point. This means that the brain can essentially be reprogrammed with even the most basic tasks, so much so that it forgets the functions that it's lived with forever. 
This is Nearable, a company that's building brain-controlled hardware that allows you to think to control VR games. In the first game, you think about moving virtual objects, and it just happens. This is Alter Ego from MIT Media Lab. They're creating this device that reads the voice in your mind, so you can think 43 divided by 6, and it says 7.16. Point being, the technology to add to our brain, communicate directly with it, is here and it looks straight out of a Black Mirror episode. I can imagine a world not so far off where our experiences aren't held back by controllers through a window, where we aren't observers poking into virtual landscapes, but where we are the controller itself, present in worlds, exploring beyond our limits. We just have to ensure we don't end up like that monkey, forgetting how to use the functions we've lived with for thousands of years.